Alrighty then. Uh, let's. I hope I know how to use this. Okay. Uh, hey everyone, uh, it's great to be here and great to see such an incredible turnout here. Uh, we're really excited to kind of show you uh, how to build fast and production-ready generative AI applications using the OP stack. So really kind of, you may be asking like, what is the OP stack? So simply put, the OP stack stands for OpenAI plus Pinecone. And you know, what it means is that you can use OpenAI and Pinecone together to build generative AI applications in no time whatsoever. So let's say, you know, I want to build a chatbot to help answer my, you know, questions about my HR docs internally, right? About like what's vacation time and policies and what holidays are off, right? So what you'll do in, in the OP stack is, of course, you guys probably are familiar with this, but you'll have your source data, right? Your documents from your HR or whatever kind of policy documents you have. You'll take those documents, chunk them, and also and then embed them using an open AI embedding uh, API using a model like Ada, Ada2, right? Once you have those vectors, you'll then actually take them and then you'll upload them into Pinecone so they're available as a knowledge base for you then to search over. So when someone comes in, you know, as, as part of, you know, a chatbot experience or something like that as a whole, they're going to take that, you know, they're going to come in and say, hey, you know, do I get, like, what holidays are there in, in July or something like that, right? What's going to happen is that, you know, your application is then going to embed that query using an OpenAI embedding API like an, into an A to 2 vector, you're going to query against the pinecone. Uh, and the idea here is that once you query pinecone with that vector, you're going to be able to fetch all the contextual like, information semantically related to the actual query. So once you have all of that context, you can then pass all that information along with the question from the actual user themselves to uh, like an open AI chat model, something like ChatGPT or GPT-4, right? so that you can essentially then really kind of take in, you know, all the latest information from your actual prompt, uh, as well as all the latest information from your actual HR documents or whatever, you know, is internally only available to your company, so you can actually, you know, answer the question correctly, right? So I think this is kind of what we frame together as kind of the OP stack and, and are really excited to bring to you. But, you know, that's not, but even though this is the OP stack, that's not to say that this doesn't come with its own challenges. So I'm going to pass it over to Neda, who's going to talk a little bit about that. Yeah, so when you're looking at OG open, the generative AI and connecting your data, there are three main challenges that we see. One is data privacy. You want your data to be safe. You want your data to be your data. Then is compliance. So when you use all this, you want, if you're bringing health data, if you're building uh, additional data, you want the cloud to be compliant. And accuracy, you want to make sure the answers are correct. So with this, Next slide. What Azure bring, Azure bring Azure Open AI to, your, to, to the cloud. It brings ChatGPT models and GPT-4 models to the cloud on Azure, and it solved those challenges. With data privacy, the, we ensure that all your prompt and completions stay on Azure. They, we do not use your data to train models. We do not pass your data to Open AI, and we do not use it for Microsoft training or learning. So all your data is private. It's in your data. It's your control. It's enterprise grade, so it enables you to work with enterprises that provide the compliance you need, HIPAA, FedRA, and all the compliance that is protected from any attacks and stuff like that. And it's responsible. We make sure that it's moderated and the content is correct and that responses are correct and grounded to your data. So basically combining Azure OpenAI with databases and vector database provides, provides you the ability to, con to have data privacy, enterprise grade, and responsible AI all at once. And that covers the O. Now let's talk about the P. Thanks, Neda. Um, so what I like to talk about now, though, in combination with Azure, you know, OpenAI service, uh, we're really excited to announce that very soon, in in the next couple of weeks, we'll actually have Pinecone fully managed, production ready, and available in Azure regions. So what that means is that you know, collectively, you know, you can really build Azure AI applications in a snap, right? You can combine your open AI models through Azure open AI service uh, and also use them with Pinecone in no time at all. Uh, we'll get that set up uh, very soon. You can also then mean, it also means that you can run your entire generative AI application in a single cloud. Uh, so you can deploy everything that you have within, a, within, within Azure itself. And that also, of course, means, you know, your models themselves are, you know, secure and private and, you know, as, and really can take advantage of all the compliance and enterprise, you know, needs uh, that Neta had mentioned earlier. So I think the next thing we're going to do is try to do a demo. OK, well, hopefully we can uh, start this demo. And fingers crossed, everything will run. But yes, these notebooks will be available. Uh, we actually have, I believe, a blog announcement on Pinecone that points to these 
uh, notebooks in GitHub already, so you can already go check them out right now. So for this demo here, what we're going to do is that we're going to actually chat with lane chain docs uh, using the OP stack, right? Um, so the idea, of course, is that you know for this particular example, you know we're using lane chain docs, but you know obviously you can include any sort of document external knowledge base yourself. Obviously sub out whatever you need. That's obviously you know whatever your application requires. So to save time, uh, because obviously there's lots of talks to go to today, we pre-embedded the lane chain docs using the text uh, embedding A to two model into a Pinecone data set. Um, so for this particular case, you can just assume that, you know, it's already been pre-chunked. It's already been actually, you know, uh, uploaded and vectorized and, and, and specified in a, in a format. And I'll show you in a second if this will load. Oh, gosh. Okay. Well, uh, if Wi-Fi is not, is not collaborating, I'm going to show you something I've already pre-cooked, unfortunately, so as contingency plans. Um, so pretty much, you know, in this particular case, right, so we have, you can see this is the format of the data here. You have an ID, you have obviously the vector values uh, that's been embedded with the A to 2 model, as well as the metadata that has the various chunks in the raw text itself in the actual, uh, in the lane chain docs for itself, okay? So once we have this data set ready, that means we're ready to start moving into indexing everything. So uh, what the next step will be is to actually initialize the index. So this is going to be, obviously, as we mentioned in the OP stack diagram, we need a place to store these embeddings and be able to query over them and doing an efficient and performant vector search. And of course, in, in this particular case, we're going to use Pinecone, where you can essentially use, uh, so when you initialize a Pinecone, if you guys are not familiar with it, all you need is to first create a project within Pinecone, uh, get an API key, and then set your environment here. And so as you can see, this environment here is actually Azure Preview. Uh, and so we're going to initialize you know, uh, that actual index in this particular case. After initialization, we're then going to create the index here. Uh, you can see that when we create the index, we're setting the dimensionality to be 1536, which is obviously the A to 2 embedding dimensionality here, uh, with cosine metric as, as kind of the similarity uh, distance metric. So once that's ready, uh, you'll actually see you connect to an index. And then when you actually you know, call you know, describe index stats, which gives you kind of the latest information about the state of the index, you can see you know, we have an index that has dimension 1536 that has no, no vectors in it as of right now. So the next step, of course, is you, know, you want to then upsert all the documents from your data frame that we talked about earlier uh, in, in a specific batch size. So once we call that, you actually see that um, you know you can check the number of vectors in the index as so. So as you can see here, which unfortunately because of Wi-Fi issues, you're going to have to trust me on this one. It's already been fully vectorized and upserted into a Pinecone index. So the next step after you have your knowledge base all prepped and ready is about initializing you know Azure OpenAI, right? So we need to first set up the service in Azure and Azure OpenAI Studio to create a deployment. And then in this particular case, we'll be using GPT-4. Uh, with a text embedding A to 2 model. Uh, so in order to do that, you'll set a couple of environment variables like such. You'll then actually connect your deployments via lane chain here. So uh, you'll first use the chat completion endpoint using the Azure chat open AI uh, kind of uh, component from lane chain. You're also going to use uh, the embeddings uh, endpoint uh, component from lane chain as well, where you specify essentially we're using the text embedding A to 2 model, right? So all together, uh, so after that, the final step here is to really initialize Pinecone Retrieval Component with LangChain. So in this particular case, uh, we have to initialize a connection here. We're going to specify that you know, the Pinecone index here is actually going to be the, uh, the retrieval component that we're going to be using for LangChain for the vector database here, where we specify this as the vector store. And then the final step is to actually initialize the retrieval question and answering component in LangChain. So this really stitches everything together. As you can see, it pulls together the large language model, the chain type, as well as the retriever here, so that you can really start asking questions and, and getting answers directly. So in this particular case, you know, you have a question such as, can you tell me about the prompt layer for OpenAI and lane chain? And we'll actually get this full kind of JSON formatted response here, um, where you see, you know, it could actually go into the documents. It's actually going to fetch the contextual results using the A to 2 model and actually spit out a summarized example, specifically talking about lane chain docs here as well. But of course, since it's GPT-4, you know, it's not just the simple kind of question and answering. It's not just simply text-based. It actually has a lot more capabilities you can work with, right? So you can also do things like, you know, display this in Markdown, right? When I actually want to, you know, actually get responses and, you know, 
and actually format this nicely so that you obviously can build it into your own applications. You know, you can ask about, you know, why would I use an output parser? And you can see it will also not only give you a response, but also give you links to actually look at, you know, the sources of the original documents themselves. So you can verify yourself that these actual, you know, uh, this actual uh, answer is accurate as well. And finally, you can also even see that, you know, for, ch uh, for chat GPT, I mean, GPT-4, you can even use, it can even format things even more nicely, right? You can actually output really nicely marked down kind of responses. It, in this particular example, you can even see it actually has, it generates a code snippet. You can actually ask it, you know, don't just tell me like, you know, what is an output parser? Tell me actually, how do I use it? Give me a code sample and it'll actually generate it for you based on the lane chain docs as well. So as you can see here, it's, it's quite a powerful kind of a combination where you can really combine all these various components, run them completely in Azure, and actually you know, get an incredibly intelligent as well as contextualized response directly from just uh, from kind of using the OP stack as a whole. So I think with that, we'll conclude uh, the demo, uh, quote unquote. Uh, and then uh, we're going to switch over to the uh, slides for the last part. OK. So I think just this is the, kind of the last kind of call out here. Uh, thanks so much for listening to the talk. Uh, if you guys are interested, uh, private preview uh, for Azure Regions is now open. We're going to be going live in late July. Uh, you can hit up the sign up, uh, kind of the sign up URL that's mentioned there, as well as also, I, I believe there's a blog post that's been released already. Check out our blogs, check out our PR. We're really excited to be really on top, you know, really kind of collaborating with Microsoft here to really bring you know, a full, uh, full OP stack kind of into Azure as a whole. So we're really excited to bring this to you all uh, and really excited to see what you will build. And that's it. Thanks, everyone.